Okay, I'm just going to allow just a couple of minutes just after seven, uh, just for those that are probably getting home uh, from a uh, hard day uh, on site or in the office, and just get them kind of logged in, uh, and we should be on the way in just a uh, couple of minutes. Um, so yeah, sit tight, and we'll, the, uh, we'll probably be kicking off uh, quite soon. Just while we're all kind of sitting tight, just to make the, uh, tonight's presentation a little bit more kind of interactive, uh, you should be able to uh, see my uh, my screen now uh, with the uh, the builder in the hard hat and uh, know your customer, uh, why you don't have to quote cheap to, to win work. Uh, just to kind of make it a bit more kind of interactive, I'm just going to throw up a poll. Uh, there's going to be a couple of polls I'll be doing uh, just while people are getting uh, kind of logged in. Uh, so you should be able to uh, see that on screen. So you guys can the, uh, can answer away. Uh, yes, no, don't know. Uh, the first poll uh, is going to be after paying for material subbies and also yourself, do you actually make less than twenty percent profit uh, on your on your jobs? So answer away. Um, take your time, and we'll the um, oh throw up the uh, the answers in just a minute so for those that are just getting themselves logged into tonight's presentation uh, many thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll be underway in just a, a minute or two. Um, just the uh, while you're all kind of sitting there uh, watching the screen, I've just the, uh, thrown up a bit of a poll. Uh, take your time to uh, to answer this first question. Uh, after paying for materials, subbies, and also yourself, uh, do you actually make less than twenty percent profit? Uh, and I'll be back with the answers in just a minute. Okay, so I'm going to close this poll. I believe I've got all the answers, so I'm just going to close that one. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to share it with you. So, of all the attendees this evening, after paying for materials, subbies, and also yourself, do you make less than 20% profit? Uh, so you can actually see there, uh, half of you uh, is a yes, and half of you is a no. Uh, and we have actually got a number of the uh, attendees this evening. So um, many thanks for the uh, kind of taking part in that. Uh, I'm just going to take that one off screen. This is obviously going to be uh, kind of uh, good information for for Simon's uh, kind of presentation. So I'm going to hide that poll. Uh, and again, while we're kind of here, uh, I'm going to also ask another poll. Again, make it interactive. So we're all kind of feel involved. Uh, if I just launch this next question, uh, do you know local builders uh, to yourself uh, that are more expensive than you? Uh, so you, do you know any local builders uh, that are close to you that are more expensive than you? Again, uh, you can fire away. Uh, it's a yes, a no, or it could be a don't know. Uh, so answer honestly, and I'll be back with the uh, the answer in just a second. Okay, just getting the uh, collating the uh, the answers uh, as we uh, as we get in. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually again going to close that poll. I'm going to flash up the. Uh... 
our little kind of surveys and our little polls here. So do you know local builders that are more expensive than you? 25% uh, of you answered yes. 25% uh, answered no. And 50% of you uh, was a don't know. So again, thank you for the uh, for filling that one in. It's all good stuff and it gives us a bit of an idea of the, uh, I guess, what you guys are are kind of up against in the, uh, in the market. So I'll take that one down. And then last but not least, uh, before we kind of get into the presentation, just the last one. Uh, do you constantly have to quote cheaper to win work? Could be sometimes, could be most of the time on, on every single job. So if you could answer honestly, uh, and then once this poll has been done, we'll be underway with our, uh, our presentation. All right. Okay, that was a quick one. So everybody's getting kind of used to the uh, to our polls. So what I'm going to do again, I'm going to close that poll and I'm going to share that information with you. Uh, and it's a uh, categorically sometimes uh, do you have to constantly have to quote cheaper to win work? Obviously, the uh, the answer is sometimes. So none of you are most of the time, and certainly none of you are on every single job. So all good stuff, uh, lots of uh, kind of useful information, and I'm sure Simon will be uh, kind of talking about this. Uh, as we uh, as we kind of go, so uh, that's the uh, enough of the polls. Um, so just to uh, kind of let everyone know, uh, we're obviously kind of using the uh, go to webinar software, and as I kind of introduced at the top of uh, the uh, the session, uh, there is a little kind of uh, question box uh, part of the, uh, the your little kind of go to webinar uh, kind of software. So ask questions as we kind of go through uh, the presentation. Uh, ask a uh, when you want. But all the uh, we will actually have a a Q and A session at the end of the presentation where we'll be hopefully answering the questions you've got. Uh, I'll be handing over to Simon to answer those ones, uh, and the uh, and ones for for myself as well on the software. So uh, without further ado, so uh, yeah, thanks very much for joining us this evening. Uh, our presentation. Uh, as everyone has kind of seen the, uh, the kind of title, uh, know your customer, uh, why you don't have to quote cheap uh, to actually win the work. And this is, again, kind of going back to the polls that we were just uh, having a chat about and kind of getting a bit of information about what you guys are, are pretty much kind of facing. Uh, the presenter is myself, Mark Brady, uh, and we've also got a guest speaker this evening, which is Simon Lazarus uh, from the Better Business Group. I'm just going to kind of introduce myself. Uh, some of you, uh, from looking at uh, some of you who have actually logged into uh, tonight's presentation, got a bit of a mixed bag of uh, possible uh, builders who don't use our software, uh, who haven't spoken to uh, Simon, and also a mix of uh, builders who do use our software and probably been using it for quite some time now, and who have also kind of spoken to Simon as well. So hopefully you'll get a, uh, lots of good, useful information out of tonight. So just to kind of put a bit of a face to the voice, uh, that's what I look like. It's not pretty, but it is what I look like. Uh, I'm the group sales manager here at HBXL. Uh, I've actually worked for HBXL for the last 12 years, the uh, kind of man and boy. So some of you probably know me quite well. I think I've actually sold software to uh, so some of you that are attending. So uh, hopefully uh, it's, all, it's all worked out for you. <laughs> um, but I, I imagine because you're here tonight, it has. Um, it's a tried and trusted estimating software um, with thousands of uh, users across uh, the UK. And I'm just going to kind of introduce Simon, or Simon's going to introduce himself, so I'll hand over to Simon now. Thanks, Mark. Uh, good evening. I'm Simon Lazarus. Um, I set up the Better Business Group uh, in 1995 with a guy called Mark Siegel. One of our subsidiaries is the Accreditors Register of Approved Tradesmen. We were actually the first company in Europe to provide continual monitoring to builders. For the past 30 years, I've been helping builders like you make more money. Uh, we work with you on a day-by-day -day basis to win more work and to charge more. On average, builders charge 15 to 20% more with our help. 
Uh, in a large part of the UK, we provide high value pre-qualified leads for builders to quote on. Excellent. Thanks for that, Simon. Okay. So now you know who, the, uh, who you're actually speaking to uh, this evening. So let's start with the uh, let's start with the excuses, and this is, I guess, what Simon's the uh, uh, his kind of feedback to us and speaking to uh, to builders that kind of seek out his help uh, through the Better Business Group. So these are just some of the excuses that he kind of comes across. Yeah. Okay. So these are excuses why you're not making the money that you deserve. I've personally spoken to over 10,000 builders and I've asked them how they decide on the price for the jobs. What we're going to show you here are four of the common answers that we get from people like yourself. They might ring a bell. First one is uh, the customer's new. I'll discount the first job and then I'll charge him full whack next time. Uh, we've all done this at some stage. Price low to win a client base in the expectation of putting your prices up in the future. I certainly did this in the early days of my business. Uh, I'll discuss this later uh, in a bit more detail about and how it can cause problems down the line. Second one, as it's a referral, I'll be expected to charge the customer the same as the last one. This is a major problem in the industry, actually, and I'm going to spend quite a bit of time looking into this in more detail. Um, next one, uh, if it means keeping everyone in work, including my sub is, I'll quote cheaper to win the job. Uh, this actually is quite a common problem this time of year. Most jobs finish before Christmas. And you guys often book in a job for the new year at lower profits just to keep your team together and to keep working. Uh, and the last one, I reckon I know the going rate for this type of work. I'll quote the same. It's really important for you guys that you cost these jobs individually to ensure that you make good money. Uh, and with that in mind, I'll pass you back to Mark. Thanks, Simon. So uh, today, tonight's webinar, it's all going to be in kind of two parts. Uh, part one uh, is really going to be kind of my side to it. Uh, certainly how to accurately cost a job to reflect all the work involved. And obviously we have got some users in the uh, this evening that are uh, certainly kind of reaping the benefits to that. And then obviously part two, it really is a case of just believing us. Uh, you can actually use these true costs to go on and win the job. And we'll actually kind of show you how. So getting the cost right. Firstly, obviously getting a sound understanding of your actual costs. And I guess that's the, uh, when I speak to builders and they're actually looking into the software, one of the, the main reasons the, uh, for certainly kind of using the software is kind of getting an idea of what the actual costs are. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, if you're trying to kind of estimate and you're trying to either, either work it all out yourself on a calculator or on a spreadsheet, or even just actually writing it out, phoning around, getting, uh, getting the uh, kind of costs, but it's not just about the material costs, there's obviously all the other kind of underlying costs that kind of go into it, uh, how much money you're going to make. And I guess this is the reason why we're uh, kind of doing tonight's presentation is so you can get a, a fair understanding, or not fair understanding, but an accurate kind of understanding of your actual costs in the job. Uh, using Estimator Express and its kind of intelligent calculators to price absolutely everything. And we, and we do mean everything. I mean, obviously, when I do a demonstration, we do kind of go into the uh, the kind of uh, the small areas that the software is actually estimating for. Uh, I mean, the bricks and the blocks and the sand and everything else is pretty kind of standard. Uh, but things, the uh, certainly kind of overheads, uh, subcontractor costs, uh, down to running a van on the uh, on the site. Uh, one of the other areas is the uh, if you can't get the plant into the job. Uh, what you can do is you can actually estimate for a hand dig out, uh, which is going to put extra cost on top. It's going to put extra kind of labor uh, on there if you're actually employing a kind of a labor gang to do that, even down to wear and tear on shovels, uh, etc., as well as the uh, the likes of wastage, uh, making sure that you're kind of accounting for that as well. And I guess the main thing, and I had this conversation with a builder yesterday, was about the quote and making sure that kind of sets you apart from other companies and other firms that are kind of estimating. You need to kind of sell uh, the estimate. You need to kind of present it in a way that it's going to win you that uh, all-important job. If the job is A, uh, actually worthwhile doing, it's going to make you money. But in order to actually win it, you need to have a, an itemized detailed quotation at times uh, to present to the customer. And we'll certainly kind of uh, show an example of that once we're in the software. So what's the difference between an estimate and what you actually quote? Uh, and there probably are uh, a number of differences. Uh, think of the estimate as the cost to you 
of the actual building works itself. So it's the estimate, it's the, the cost uh, that you need to kind of be, uh, kind of set down. Uh, is it a, uh, and as I said, to, a, a lot a lot to builders, uh, is it actually even kind of worth uh, tendering for the job if it's not even going to uh, uh, make you any money? And I guess it's considering the actual quote itself, uh, the nice uh, kind of 13, 14 page a document uh, you're actually presenting to the customer as what you intentionally want to charge them, including your profit, which again, isn't going to be plastered all over the quotation. It's all going to be kind of rounded up in there, but they know exactly what they're kind of getting uh, from you as a builder. Everything's been itemized. The the, the tiles that they, they require, the windows they want uh, is actually in there. Everything's kind of itemized the, uh, and kind of listed out. And again, as I said, we will be kind of having a quick look at this uh, in this little kind of presentation. For those that probably know me, uh, I tend to kind of go into this demonstration. I could actually probably use a whole hour uh, to do it. But what I'm actually going to be doing is a slightly kind of different approach. It's going to be a little bit more kind of the uh, uh, streamlined uh, with a few kind of the uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, slides. Uh, but what we're actually going to be doing is uh, doing this particular job. Uh, it's going to be a lean to extension. You can see on there we've got a uh, bifold door, a couple of windows, uh, brick. Uh, it's got the uh, the kind of lean two on there. My uh, the size of the extension is going to be four meters by seven, so we've got a twenty eight square meter uh, kind of area to do. The height of the wall is going to be two and a half meters with a pitch of a roof about thirty degrees. I guess while I kind of go through this, if you could maybe kind of have in your mind how much do you think you would kind of the uh, kind of charge on a job about this size. Uh, and hopefully at the end of it, it might be in the same kind of ballpark, uh, your kind of estimated rate that you're actually using. So what we're actually going to be doing is using the uh, the kind of quick quotes uh, element of the uh, the software. Uh, what I've actually just done there is just kind of filled in the uh, the details uh, of the uh, uh, the job. When we kind of use the quick quote, uh, we're actually using a specific template to actually cover a lean to extension. The software actually kind of comes uh, pre uh, pre built with uh, the templates in there, so I'm just filling in the uh, customer's details, uh, and all importantly as well, I'm actually just checking through what my default uh, uh, markup and profit markups on the job. As you can see there, I've got my software defaulted to thirty percent, so I know on a report towards the end how much I'm going to make. Also as well, because the job's going to be starting, could be in a couple of months' time. What I can do is actually make sure that my inflation cost is actually covered. Um, I've got 2% in there. So to make sure that if there's any kind of inflation cost on materials later on, uh, they're all the, it's not eating into my profit margin. We're actually going to be doing, as I said, that lean to uh, single store extension. We're going to do a brick. We could change it to, uh, to a render or we could have changed it to a, uh, uh, a stone. I'm going to put in my, uh, dimensions, my, my width and my length of my extension. As I said, it's going to be four by seven. I'm going to leave my depth of my trenches to uh, about a meter down. I'm going to change the ceiling height to uh, 2.5 meters. And I'm also going to change the pitch to 30 degrees. Um, very, very quickly, I can then go on to the brick and block cavity walls. Uh, we are going to do a brick and block cavity. I'm just going to slightly adjust the, uh, the wall widths to 300 and 100 rather than giving it kind of partial building regs on there. And then all we do is press complete and I can move on straight to the floor. I'm going to change the floor makeup to an insulated and reinforced uh, slab. And I'm going to slightly increase the, uh, the thickness of that slab to 150. And if I want to, I can actually put a, uh, a kind of a, a finish on the floor as well. I don't have to have one. I could have put it as not required, but we're actually going to do a mesh and insulation. I'm going to choose a cut roof for this job. And I'm also gonna plaster uh, up to, a, uh, we can either do to the rafters or we can actually go up to a flat ceiling. Again, press complete, it's estimated and it's done. What I'm now gonna do, I'm actually gonna put my bifold door in there. So by choosing the bifold door, uh, and we do this with a direct link through to a company called Crystal Direct. Now Crystal Direct are a windows and doors manufacturer uh, and I can actually choose the width of the door. Uh, I can also choose the finish on the door. So we just got a nice uh, standard wood grain, brilliant whites. And I can actually choose the cost of the door. That's 2250 or 2270 below. I can select that door. I can then select the lintel, which has then got a cost. 
and I can also select the cavity closure system uh, that Crystal Direct actually offer as well. So once we've selected the door, I then select how many doors I want, and then hey presto, that's the uh, that's all estimated. I can press complete, and I can move on to the windows. Again, we can choose the Crystal Direct windows, so they do. Uh, PVCU, aluminium, uh, they do it in different styles, uh, different sizes, different heights. So you're actually getting the right. And, and if, obviously, if the customer's chosen a specific window they want, uh, different colors if they want, and then we can put in how many windows we've actually got. Press complete. What I can also do, I can actually set out the actual rooms themselves as specific items. So what I'm actually doing there. I'm actually doing a uh, family room and we've actually got the size of the family room. It's automatically picked up from my estimate on the internal dimensions, five by three, five with a 2.5 meter high uh, wall. And we can actually select a, a group of items for uh, a family room. So now my ceiling roses I've estimated, my light switches, my wall lights, uh, I can adjust them if I need to, if the customer wants. Uh, three wall lights and what they want is an extra socket downstairs and then we can the, uh, also add uh, the actual plumbing items uh, to this room as well very very quickly choose the family room gives us a total area of the room 19.25 square meters and again if we scroll down you can see there it's now starting to apply uh, all the pipe work the radiators uh, and all the extras that go into the radiator tail. So as I said, it goes into a very kind of a uh, kind of detailed element of the estimate. We all we then do is click on the quick quote button, and within a couple of seconds, the software is actually estimating my thirteen items. I've actually yes, uh, I've actually priced up. So twenty eight thousand five hundred fifty one, which is excluding VAT and profit this stage so this is the uh, the cost of the uh, the estimate and then we've got that price there once the price has been done uh, what we can then do is we can have a look at a build schedule for the job so we can project manage it through to completion and this can actually make up part of uh, the quotation so it's not just the quote you're giving them it's actual uh, built uh, uh, project information you can say to the customer as a kind of a as, as a business, as a professional, we want to kind of plan this out for you so you know what's happening at the uh, the kind of stages as we kind of go through. What we can also do as well is very importantly, and this is again where Simon will be uh, having a chat with you guys afterwards. This is a, a profit report. Uh, you can actually see the, the different uh, build phases kind of listed that we've estimated. So we've estimated the shell, uh, first fix, decoration, footings, foundations, all the way down to oversight and slabbing. We've got an item cost in this column, so 27,323. Software will also calculate the wastage. So the days of sitting down and trying to work out a, uh, how much you think you'll waste, the software automatically calculates that for you. So we've actually got a 28,571 cost there for total costs. And all important, we've actually marked the job up by 30%. So we know £8,500 uh, is going to be our kind of profit markup. So the column on the far right-hand column, uh, the sum of total, including profit, but again, excluding VAT, is 37142 And And this information is at your fingertips. Uh, this is only just one report of, I believe, 60 uh, we've actually got in the software. So you'll be able to kind of analyze all the costs and know whether or not the job's actually going to be worthwhile uh, even tendering for. One of the other reports, just to really kind of quickly show you, is the uh, materials order schedule. This will then kind of order your materials when you need them. Uh, so all about cash flow, making sure that you're, uh, you're not buying materials far too, uh, too far in advance. And you'll see here, it's actually ordering the amount of bricks for all the bricks above DPC. You've actually got uh, an amount of the bricks, how many bricks uh, the software is calculating for your wastage, the uh, the quantities, and then also the costs as well. And as I said, this is only two reports out of a possible 60 that you can the uh, you can have access to. And all important, 
uh, and this is the quotation that the software will produce at the click of a button. It's itemized, it's broken down, it's got the, uh, the total costs, excluding VAT, with the materials listed, you can also list the, the labor as well. And this is what's going to win you the uh, the uh, the actual work. You're putting this in front of the customer because your competitors aren't using the, uh, the software and they're not doing this. And then you've actually got a, uh, the price in there uh, and also your terms, conditions and acceptance of the, uh, uh, the estimate as well. Uh, I wanted to kind of just flash this one back up again, as the, uh, we said, 857145, but also just wanted to maybe kind of, what we actually work out this job, 37142 by 28 square meters, we're actually calculating a roughly around about 1400 pounds uh, per square meter. Now, a lot of builders, when I kind of speak to them, they're kind of calculating, they're estimating by that kind of fashion anyway. Uh, but again, it's just to kind of show you that the software is kind of calculating uh, to a degree how your experience uh, kind of tells you, but what you're actually doing, you're actually doing it a lot, lot quicker, and you're also getting a lot more information out, namely how much money you're actually looking to make on the uh, on the job. So that's the end of the demo. Uh, there will be an opportunity to have a bit more of a, uh, for those that don't own our software, to have a bit more of a kind of an in-depth uh, uh, demonstration of the software, which we can obviously kind of uh, arrange at a later stage, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, keep stum and I'm going to pass over to Simon for the uh, part two of tonight's presentation. Thanks, Mark. Uh, I'm just um, going to give you uh, control, you Simon. Give me control. So, uh, okay. If you, uh, you should be able to move your mouse now. Okay, let's have a look. I'm trying it on the keyboard. Should it work on the keyboard? Uh, yeah, well, if you just press the, uh, the left uh, mouse button, it should... Uh, move the presentation forward. Uh, there we go. Okay, yep, it's doing it. Cool. Okay, thanks, Mark. Okay, firstly, uh, I'd like to say we've been working with HBXL for the past 15 years. Now, we monitor over 600 builders and we follow every quote they do. We analyze what our successful and expensive builders are doing, and we use this information to help less established builders improve. And without a shadow of a doubt, the most profitable jobs we see are those that are one on the back of HBXL quotes. So let's consider this. Has the customer ever said you're too cheap? No, of course not. All you ever hear from the customers is they've received cheaper, cheaper prices than you have. Um, have they ever gone cold on you and not replied? Yes. Um, this is actually one of the most annoying things about the job. You put in loads of time and effort, normally in your private time, and you hear nothing more after you've given them your price. But what is the true reason for this? You need to know what they're actually thinking to be able to move the business forwards. Do you know builders that are more expensive than you? Quite an interesting report, uh, response to that poll. 50% uh, don't know, 25% say yes. So if you don't understand your marketplace, you cannot move your business forwards. Everybody knows about the builders are quoting cheaper than them. Most people do come across people that are more expensive than them that are still in business. You need to understand why you're winning and losing jobs and who else is in your marketplace. Have you considered that you might be too cheap and they don't tell you? None of your customers want to be embarrassed or have an argument with you. So all you ever hear from them is they're going to be somebody cheaper. It's non-confrontational. Price is a double-edged sword. If you quote too cheap, the good and the savvy clients won't use you. And it happens more than you think. So can you charge more? I'm sure you'd all like to be charging more. Uh, and to be clear about this, this is not about deceiving your customers. What I'm talking about now is charging what you're worth. When we work with builders, on average, they charge 20, 15 to 20% more with our help than they were previously. And actually they convert on average 13% more of their own quotes into work. So the answer to this question is yes, you can charge more. Absolutely, you can. Every job you've ever done, they could have used a cheaper builder, but they paid more for you. Most people come across builders that are charging more than they do, so people are paying high prices in the marketplace. Your job is to prove you're worth a difference. Yes, there are loads of cheap quotes out there, particularly with all the rated people, check a trade, trust the traders, where it's very easy to go on and get loads of builders to quote on jobs. Uh, it's quite common always to find some idiot quoting below the cost of materials. I'm sure you've come across someone similar. The point is we both know the job can't be done for the price they're quoting, so it never ends well for the client if they use them. 
Your problem is these cheap bills are brilliant at point of sale. They look and sound better than you. They've got great websites, smart vans. They've got loads of false references on the waiting, rating websites. They're also very cheap, so people are obviously tempted. You're losing out to these cowboy type builders. You need to keep your team busy or they'll go and work for someone else. So what do you do? Inevitably, as we said, found out in the poll, you slide your price down to the level that keeps your diary full. But is this helping your business? So this vicious uh, cycle of low pricing, I'm gonna go into quite a lot of detail here. What happens is you get the job, you do it well, you get recommended as being good and reasonably priced. A year later, the client recommends you to a friend and tells them what they paid. Three years later, their daughter wants a similar job and wants to pay the same as their dad. You become very busy. Your suppliers are happy. Your subbies are very happy. They're always earning money. You're making lower profits each year because nobody wants to pay more than the first person in the chain. So you have to do an extra job to make up the shortfall. We call this cycle the recommendation rut, and it's really common in the building industry. You guys have got a really hard job. You do a day's work in all horrible weather conditions. We're going to get some snow wet next week, probably, and I'm sure half of you will be out on site working in it. After a day's work, you then go and visit new clients. You then go home and you start working on your quotes. You do this six or seven days a week. We regularly get manual copy quotes emailed to us at one or two o'clock in the morning. And I'm thinking, come the end of the week, how accurate can these prices possibly be? You've had no sleep all week. Tomorrow you're going to go and work on a potentially dangerous site. And I've got to tell you, about half my builders are divorced because they have no private life. In addition, over time, your backs go and your knees go just to make things worse. So the reality is that you guys are not charging what you're worth. You know it, but amazingly, your clients do as well. So how do we all end up like this? When you put your price in, the customer always tells you about a cheaper quote. They really want to use you. Can you please match the cheaper guy? When they don't use you, all they always tell you is it's because you're too expensive. And I can promise you now that at least half those people are lying to you. We've given out so far 620 million pounds worth of leads for builders to quote on. And our builders aren't cheap. In 2018, only 6.09% of customers said they didn't use my builders because they were too expensive. In 2017, it was 6.21%. And since 2003, when we've been giving leads out, Overall, it's 8.51%. So this price thing is far, far less of an issue than you think it is. And interestingly, around 3% of clients told us they ruled out a builder because he was too cheap and they didn't think he could do the job right for the money he was charging. In every case, though, they told the builder that he was too expensive, even though they didn't use him because he was too cheap. So when that builder then quotes for a similar job, he's tempted to price even cheaper. So what you guys are doing, you're coming to this cycle of charging far less than you should be. Now, before we work with builders, we survey their past customers on every aspect of their business and their staff. And in 2018, unbelievably, 67% of all the surveys I had back, the clients told us the main reason they chose the builder was because he was recommended and cheap. In 2017, the percentage was 52%. So in a boom time for builders, when there's so much work around, you're more people are choosing you because you're cheap, it's getting worse. We get surveys back saying he was too old, he was too young, he had tattoos, I don't trust people with beards, he had bad breath, I didn't want him to, in my house for four months, uh, he was six foot six tall and I felt a bit intimidated. Now we had one back from a lady, she said, uh, I didn't trust this guy at all. The first thing he did was go upstairs and take loads of pictures of where the stairs were gonna go for my loft conversion. He didn't ask my permission, and for all I knew, he was photographing my knicker drawer. And in the end, I paid £8,000 more for someone I felt safer with. If that guy was then going to quote on a similar job, he'd have gone cheaper for the next one because she told him he was far too expensive. Two big failure reasons we're getting nowadays. One, the quote wasn't detailed enough. And two, it took too long to come. That's why I think HBXL is so necessary for you guys. And my overall message to you is that you're looking the wrong way. You're understandably focused on your cheap competitors and how to win jobs against them. Hopefully I've shown you that you can't run a profitable business by lowering your price. You just end up working for people that are looking to pay below the market value. They don't have any money put aside for unforeseen. They don't want to pay for any extras. Half of them want to do it for cash, so they've got to hold over you with their tax man if they're ever falling out. Uh, if you do get the job and do it well, 
you end up in this recommendation, right, and build lower profits into, into your business for the future. My view is what you should be doing is turning around and looking in completely the opposite direction. You should be looking at the builders that are more expensive than you. Most of these builders don't do a better job than you. In fact, a lot of them, they do fair to middling work. They sub out the work to different teams so the quality is variable. They're not on the site themselves. These expensive builders often have an office and a staff and other overheads you don't have. So they've got to charge 15 to 20 percent more than you uh, before they even set out to quote people, but they still win work. So what you need to be asking yourself is, what do I need to do to make people want to use me at the higher prices other builders are able to charge? The building business is all about working for the right customer at the right price. If you do that, you have the money to do the job properly. You can pay your guys a little extra, so they're always available when you need them. You yourself can earn proper money. There's some left over a pension. There's some profits left to expand the business. There's enough margin for you at some stage to come off the tools and pay somebody else to do the work you're doing on the site. Or you can start putting money aside to do your own developments. So how do we break this cycle? First thing you need to do, you need to obtain leads where they've got no previous price history with you. You've then got to prove that you're worth paying more for. This is largely what HBXL help you do and more specifically what we help you do. You then make good profits on the job because you're quoting the right rate. You then get recommended for the quality of your work, not your price. Then when they recommend you, you're making profits in the future because you're building this extra margin into the business all the way down the line. To change the business um, and to make this change happen, you need to understand who your customers are and what they're thinking and what your competitors are doing. Are you too cheap? Are you too expensive? Are you professional? Are you not so professional as your competitors? We've uh, put together a free business review for HBXL clients, potential clients or existing clients. So we're happy to do this for you free of charge. What we'll do, we'll take six of your past customers and jobs that you've completed will send them a very detailed questionnaire about every aspect of the job why they chose you how your price compared to other quotes they received how good or bad a job did you do what they thought of you and your staff and so on would they use you again what we'll then do we'll give you one hour free business mentoring to understand how you quote and what to charge we'll go through the results of the surveys with you We'll also show you perhaps what our more successful and expensive builders are doing, and we'll compare that to how you're currently working. This uh, review will help you define what your profit margin should be. It will give you an independent overview of your business. It will form a template for taking your business forwards. What we hope to do, uh, we'll get to know what your clients really think of you. It will highlight the changes you need to make to improve your business today. If you want to take things further, we can actually work proactively with you on every one of your own inquiries. Using our systems, as I said earlier, on average, you'll charge 15 to 20% more and convert around 13% more of your quotes to, into work. We'll give you continual feedback of why people are using you, not using you, what the other prices were. We'll mentor you to improve the business. Uh, depending on where you are in the UK, we can also provide you quality leads to quote on. Thanks for listening. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, I'm going to pass you back to Mark to finish off. Thanks for that, Simon. Yeah, it's very, uh, very kind of informative. <laughs> uh, some really kind of good stuff there. So I kind of guess the uh, your kind of next steps really. Um, obviously, I kind of gave you guys a bit of a kind of a flavour of the software. I mean, there's a lot more. There's a lot more to it. I mean, I was just pretty much kind of scratching the surface about being able to just the uh, select a, a particular template cost everything up but we will kind of go into the the areas that uh, i guess you want to improve on whether or not that's the uh, making sure that your quotation is nice and detailed uh, what your profit forecast is going to be uh what the uh, how how is that going to save you time uh all these kind of areas and stuff that i uh, kind of do oh i'll just uh, give that back to me Simon, one sec um all these kind of the uh, kind of areas that you guys are kind of coming up and there's, there, there's plenty i mean there's there's so much you can actually improve on um and it's not just the estimates for express software um one of the uh, the slides i had up at the very beginning which was the uh, 
uh, the 3D plan. I did that in our kind of Plans Express software, which is our kind of CAD uh, solution. Uh, and I did that probably in about uh, 10, 15 minutes, just being able to uh, sketch a, a little kind of extension. I can then feed that into Estimates for Express and actually do the takeoff directly from the, uh, from the plan. We also do health and safety uh, software as well. So, uh, and also kind of project management. So certainly we, we're quite happy to have a chat, uh, show you guys what, we, what we're all about, what we've got. And again, as I said, how it kind of improves your business. And I've been doing this 12 years and the amount of builders that uh, we have kind of improved on and who have kind of built their business uh, based on being able to kind of save time and make money. Uh, it's the, uh, it, I guess it's why I've kind of been with the company for as long as I have done. Uh, it's, a very, uh, it's a very good company to work for. Um, what we're also going to do as well is arrange, or certainly your kind of next steps, is arranging the kind of one hour free business mentoring and review with the Better Business Group uh, and with Simon and Mark. Uh, what you'll actually find at the end of this, year, when we kind of end the, the, the presentation, you will have a, a small survey towards the end. It's just the, uh, again, some questions, some feedback, but also as well, there will be a question about do you want to arrange the one hour free? Uh, and also, do you want to have a demonstration? So hopefully you can answer there uh, and we'll certainly be in touch and we'll know why we want to speak to you. But we do kind of follow up on uh, all our attendees. We also record this uh, presentation as well. So you'll all get a copy of the presentation to uh, go back, listen to my parts of the, uh, the presentation and listen to what Simon's uh, had to say tonight. Again, just to kind of in case you missed anything uh, through the uh, through the presentation. Make sure you jot down our details, so take a couple of minutes. Uh, if you don't already have them, uh, I'm sure uh, we, we have been in touch, but you've got our kind of phone numbers up on screen. But as I said, you will get a copy. We will be in touch. Uh, so up to you, if you want to do it at a later stage, uh, we'll, the, uh, we'll certainly kind of uh, uh, follow up on that. Um, thank you for your attention this evening and giving up the the last the uh, 40 to 50 minutes. I know your, your time is precious is in the evening time. Uh, so many thanks for the uh, for doing that. Uh, what we're actually going to finish off now is just for uh, some Q&A. So I'll give you guys, uh, I think I've got a couple of questions kind of coming through that anyway, uh, while we're kind of uh, chatting. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give you guys the, uh, a, a couple of, couple of more uh, minutes and stuff to answer questions uh, that you can, uh, but what we'll do while, while you can do that, we'll the, uh, hopefully answer a couple of the questions here, or maybe they might just be uh, kind of uh, kind of statements. Uh, Jake says, uh, biggest issue is customers uh, do not value a tradesman's time. The issue is everyone wants a free estimate. If they had to pay for your time, people would act differently towards us. I guess maybe that's a uh, question to uh, to you, Simon, or certainly a statement. Is that something that he? Uh, you feel you, your builders and the conversations you're having with them? Absolutely. I think it's getting worse now. We've got all these uh, so-called rating websites. It's very easy for the customer to trawl. You know, they look at house and homes under the hammer uh, and they see that they can refurb a five bedroom house for 4,000 quid. So they go on all the websites and get a load of your builders to come around and waste your time. The main thing though is you've got to pre-select the jobs and the clients that you really want to be working for. If you use Estimator Express, It'll cut down several days per week that you're spending doing this quotation, and you'll be coming out with a far more accurate and profitable business at the end of it. So, yeah, it is a bane of your builders' lives. As I said earlier, half my builders are divorced because they're spending most of their evenings and weekends either seeing potential clients or working prices out for people who've got no intention of using them in the first place. It's, it's a mad industry, to be honest with you. So, yeah. Excellent. So, yeah, I'll give a couple of minutes to uh, so maybe get some questions coming in. So uh, maybe I'll just uh, grab a, a quick drink while hopefully they, uh, <laughs> they get done. Uh, but, yeah, uh, Raymond, we've got your your kind of uh, your request. So, yeah, we'll definitely be in in touch and we'll definitely follow that up and try and get that booked in with uh, with Simon. So, yeah, uh, good news on that. Um, so, yeah, I'll be back in just a second. OK.
OK, back again after a, uh, a nice sip of water after, a, uh, after that. Um, just a quick question, Simon. Um, what uh, kind of areas do you uh, kind of cover? OK, we're based in Potter's Bar, just at the top of the M25 by South Mim Services. I currently cover all the way up to Sheffield, all the way around to the East Coast, all the way around to the South Coast, west as far as Oxford and Swindon. But yeah. I, can, I can expand out in different areas if we need to. That's where we're currently covering. Yeah, excellent. All right, thanks for that. Um, what uh, kind of profit margin do you kind of recommend your builders to uh, to kind of put on uh, for each job then? Okay, that's why we asked the question in the first place on that small poll. I think you should be making 20% uh, profit, clear profit, after your materials, your labour, your wages and your overhead. You should be making 20% clear profit on these jobs. And not only that, you should be. We haven't talked about cash flows and how you charge for them. Most of my builders get 20 to 25 percent deposit two weeks before they start the job. They get fortnightly payments without any valuations uh, regularly, and their final payment is five percent or a thousand pounds and no more at the end of the job. No retention, no penalty clauses, and believe you me, that is achievable. Most of my guys are doing that. Fantastic. Thanks for that, Simon. Uh, just another quick question. Um, would you uh, suggest it can sometimes turn into a bit of a kind of an interview with the client? Uh, they're kind of interviewing the builder and the builder's kind of interviewing interviewing them because I guess the, uh, things are kind of changing in the in the industry at the moment. It's about kind of having that kind of professional kind of uh, presentation and edge. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what you've got to appreciate is they're probably going to be spending with you the second biggest amount of money they've ever spent in their lives apart from buying natural property. And their default position is all you builders are a bunch of cowboys. You're looking to shaft them and take their money and run away or do a crap job because that's all they hear about on the TV. You know, I I deal with all the disputes that my builders get involved in, and it's gone up 15-fold in the past probably five or six years. And virtually all of them are people trying on not to pay the final payment or the extras on the job. You never hear about any of that on TV. You you really need to uh, concentrate and be specific in the jobs you want to be doing and give them 110% commitment. You can't spread yourself too thin. There's loads of inquiries around at the moment. Half of them are rubbish inquiries. You're not going to make money on for people that don't want to pay you the proper price. You've got to select the people you really want to be working for. Give it 110%. If you spend the extra, look better through HPXL, give them attention to detail, turn up when you say you're going to turn up, uh, make make interesting uh, suggestions about how they can improve uh, the way they're doing the job and so on, you will, will win more jobs. It's all about first impressions and point of sale. Unfortunately for you, a lot of these cheap guys, they're very good at that side of the business, but they're, as far as it goes, they can't do the job or don't want to finish the job properly. A lot of builders I deal with or I take on, they're excellent at the building side of the job, but the salesy side, the point of sale stuff, selling themselves and presenting themselves is not as good as these cheap guys. And often it doesn't take much to tweak your businesses to make you far more successful. It doesn't need much. One or two jobs or charging 15 or 20 percent more on a reasonable sized job makes a massive difference to your business and your bank balance at the end of the year. Excellent. No, th thanks for that feedback, uh, Simon. Uh, just a bit of a, uh, not, not more of a question, but just Jake kind of following up on the uh, bit of a discussion uh, about the, uh, the software in, in particular. Uh, yeah, we can certainly kind of uh, revisit that, uh, Jake. That's not a problem. We'll certainly show you some of the, the changes the, uh, we've kind of made to the software, especially around the, the kind of quick quote and also making sure that the presentation itself is all, because uh, it, it really is just a button in the software uh, that you click. Uh, you can change some of the settings, how you want it to be presented, put your company logo on there. Uh, you can also uh, modify uh put your own pictures as well so if you keep a library of of the work that you do so they can get an example of uh how you kind of run a site from being uh, the professional kind of business that you are uh it's all kind of covered from a health and safety uh kind of perspective especially when you see the mregs changing uh making sure that the customer is very informed on on site if they've got access uh if they if you're supplying certain things the um, or they're supplying certain things to you so these can, yeah we can certainly kind of uh, revisit that not a problem jake uh just again maybe a bit of a statement from uh, from raymond um uh he hopes that he can grow up grow his business uh and i believe he's probably already might have met mark and simon so he can certainly kind of uh 
recommend uh, Mark and Simon to, to those that uh, haven't really kind of met them yet. And hopefully through the business consultations, <laughs> we can the uh, we can certainly uh, do the introductions and and see you guys. We are going to be kind of on the road and stuff as well. So look out for our little kind of uh, demonstration days that are kind of coming up. Uh, HBXL are also going to be at the uh, Professional Builder uh, live show down in uh, the Alley Pally down in London. So it might be in your neck of, your, neck of the woods if you're down that way. So, yeah, certainly uh, you probably see a bit of me and Simon on the road, the uh, locations and stuff in and around uh, your areas. So, yeah, certainly kind of look out for that as well. Um, uh, just another one from Jake. Uh, we have issues of, of an accepted price. You then start uh, and are asked if it can be done any cheaper. Negotiate beforehand, surely not when the the actual job starts. Yeah, I can imagine uh, that is that is a particular issue. Um, okay, I've got to answer that one. Uh, yeah, you okay. can. If, okay. Um, the way to stop these customers buggering around is you have a proper contract. We'll give you a contract, or you can use HBXL's contract software, which is very specific. Also, you take a 20% deposit two weeks before you start the job. If they then play funny with you, your money in hand, you've got control over that job and that site. They're not going to, anybody that's looking to make you around is not going to pay 20% up front and agree to the uh, higher price that you're quoting in the first place and agree to strict contract terms. So you will get less of these if you price the jobs correctly, have a proper contract paperwork and have a proper payment schedule. It's a good way of screening out the time wasters. What you end up then with is people that are looking for a good builder. Often they've had a cheap builder in the past, they've had a problem. This time around, one thing more, one, more than anything else is not to have the problems they had uh, last time round. And if you can prove that you're different to the cheaper builders, they will use you, they will abide by your payment terms, uh, and they will pay you money up front. And I can give you a perfect example of this. We had a client came to us for quite a large job. Their budget was £150,000. They were going to go with a company uh, called Benny Builders UK Limited, who quoted 165000 The architect was really pushing them in for the job. Uh, my two builders quoted 184,500 and 219,000. Uh, the client said my builders are really expensive. I said, look, even if you don't use my builders, I'd always have a problem. Let me do a free background check on Benny. He's got an outstanding county court judgments for three years for 5,200 quid, which I said if he's a decent builder, he'd have cleared that by now. Uh, more worryingly, he went bust in 2013, Benny, Benny Builders Limited, not Benny Builders UK Limited, with three outstanding county court judgments worth about 13,500 quid. So I emailed all this to the client. I said, look, you know, you've got a problem here. Your architect's not looking out for your best interest. He's probably on a backhand because he's recommended to somebody who's got a history of going out of business and not paying court judgments when they've been awarded against them. Uh, if you have a problem with him on the site, you've got no redress. You can't take him to court because even if you do and you win against him, he won't care if he gets a fifth CCJ. You're on a hiding to nothing. So she emailed the credit searches to the architect and said, it's a disgrace you're recommending him. You told me you've checked him out. Better Business Group found out in two minutes over the phone that he's got an adverse history. Uh, you're sacked. Uh, and she then used my most expensive bill of 219,000. He got a copy of the contract that they'd already made out for Benny Builders. And in it, he had to do a month's work and then there was a valuation. Then they had two weeks to pay. Uh, there was a 5% retention and there was a thousand pound a week penalty clause. So I phoned the client up. I said, if you want my builders, they're not going to subsidize your build. They're not there to put money in, hoping you're going to pay them at the end. You need to pay them 20% of the money two weeks before he starts, fortnightly payments without any valuation. The thousand pound a week penalty clause is illegal, but if you want it, he'll do it on the proviso that you'll pay him a thousand pound a week extra if he's early. And she agreed all that. And he started the job two weeks ago. Uh, he got 40 something thousand pounds two weeks before he started the job. He got his next payment two days after starting the job, which is another 20,000 quid. Um, so it can be done. And this is the sort of thing that we see happening every day of the week. You can't worry about these cheap people. You mustn't let them run the job. The moment you're in hock to them by taking your payments in arrears or letting the payments slide, they've got a hold over you. That will continue to the end of the job. You're hoping then in the final payment, you're going to make your profit you're then giving them a huge incentive not to pay that final payment to try it on with you. So this business is all about working for the right customer, for the right builder, for the right money, getting in, doing it properly, doing it quickly, and getting out again. You can't make money in this game if you don't do it that way at all. All right. 
Excellent. Uh, that's, that's, that's really good. That's a uh, very, very good feedback on that one. Excellent. So, um, yeah, I think we'll probably uh, kind of wrap up there. I haven't had any more uh, kind of questions coming down the wire, so I think we're, uh, we're pretty much all kind of uh, power pointed out uh, by this point in the evening. It's coming up to five to eight, so I'm sure you want to kind of just go and relax and, and chill out, or some of you have probably got some estimating to do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll kind of wrap up there. But as I said, what we'll actually do is a follow-up. Uh, at the end of this, uh, when the webinar finishes, there will be a little kind of survey. Please the... Uh, take your time to uh, uh, just fill out some of the questions. They're, they're very, very simple, but also as well about kind of follow-ups on Simon's uh, Simon's time, uh, the hour, and then uh, also kind of looking at your last six the, uh, uh, customers. We'll certainly uh, get that kind of booked in, and we'll also do some follow-ups on the software. We'll get some demonstrations booked in. Quite happy to uh, kind of go through it in a little bit more kind of detail. So many, many thanks for uh, attending this evening. I know time is precious, so thanks for giving it up. Uh, thank you very much for Simon attending this evening and giving us uh, his knowledge and uh, his he, uh, his kind of insight. That's been great. Thanks for that. Yeah, no, it's been good. I think it's been very, very good and, and very, very worthwhile. Uh, we'll probably be doing some more of these uh, kind of presentations, so certainly do kind of look out for them in the coming months. And as I said, we are going to be out and about on the road. Come and meet us. Uh, come and meet us face to face. But I'm sure some of you will be meeting kind of Mark and Simon quite a, uh, quite soon. So I'm going to wrap up there. I'm going to stop talking uh, and let you guys, and as I said, we will also record it, so we'll we'll follow up on there as well. So I bid you a good a good evening, and the uh, yeah, we'll the uh, we'll speak soon. All right, thanks, Simon. Thanks, guys. Nice no talk problem. to you. Cheers. Yeah, you Cheers. Bye bye.